quick, quick, once I've actually got some time and people aren't home and I actually have the wherewithal to do it, let's quickly film an episode! Hello and welcome to The Art of Pointy Things, a channel where I discuss my adventures in knitting, sewing, embroidery and other similar crafts. I am Dusty and today I am doing the 10th episode of my monthly knitting and general crafting podcast, detailing what I've been made in the past <clears throat> two months since I spoke to you. I'm sorry it's been a while, um, but this is episode 10 and I'm happy that I've sort of gotten to double digits. I'm Honestly, I wasn't sure how many of these I would end up making when I started. I just knew I wanted to try it and I'm really happy I've gotten this far. If you've been here and you've been watching since the beginning or you've gone back and enjoyed my videos, then thank you very much. And if you're new here, then I hope you enjoy yourself and you can start sticking around. So just for information, this episode does include both knitting and sewing. Um, so if you don't enjoy some of the content, I've tried to put the chapters below with clear of which craft it is so that you can skip the content that you don't want to watch. Um, so firstly I'm not actually wearing any visible knitwear today. It is too hot. It is beginning to hit actual summer in England in the southwest where I live. So it's a bit hot for knitwear. I do have some summer knits but not as many as I think I would like. Though I have been using the shawl, the lightweight, fingering weight, very loose gauge shawl as a sort of sun cover when I've been going outside in the garden for little things. So, on to the first part, finished objects. I do have quite a few actually, which is probably good given the fact it's been like two and a half months since I last did an episode. It's only almost three actually at this point. Oh dear. Um, so the first thing is, you know, in the middle of summer, the first thing I'm going to show you is a knit hat. So, this is the Pearl Soho classic rib hat. I've knit this before for myself. This one is for my other half. Um, so it's the adult large. No, this is the adult medium, whereas according to the pattern I should have made the adult large. My boyfriend has quite a large head. He can't buy standard shop hats. He has to buy his hats online. And this is big enough for him to wear when he's wearing headphones and to not like press into his ears painfully because that's what he finds with a lot of hats is that it might be okay you know especially the stretch ones it might be okay on its own but if he puts his headphones in then it can catch it he wants a slightly longer one so you could fold the brim up so I did that for him um, so this is uh, the yarn is West Yorkshire Spinners Colour Lab in the silver grey colourway which is 100% British wool which I'm all for reducing shipping and is non superwash. Um but yeah no this is quite a large size like my general recommendation is go at least a size smaller with the Pearl Soho patterns. The Pearl Soho knit pattern, uh plastic rib, the watch cap which is a similar pattern but I think it's two by two rib. I've seen a lot of people say the same, you know, go a size down. Um but yeah that was I've, I've finished some things, but they're mostly small things, you'll notice, but hat, item number one. Item number two, I do not have, and I'm going to show you the yarn I used to make it. So, one of a family, fr a friend, a family friend of mine, bleh, 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 a family friend of mine was meant to get married in June 2020. You can imagine that did not happen. She ended up getting legally married on the 31st of December 2020, but she could only have a few people actually attend the wedding. Um, but she was able to recently have what she called a happily ever after party where all of her friends and family showed up and we basically had the wedding reception. It was very nice. But in the meantime, she had a little baby. And I sort of, I think I sent again a gift with the original wedding invite. Um, but it felt a bit weird to be showing up with nothing. And a few people have been knitting baby jumpers and I was just like, they look so small and cute and I don't have anybody else in my life been seeing baby jumpers for. Well, I do, I do sort of, but like you know, they don't take very long. I've got some acrylic easy wash yarn sat in my stash. That very cute baby colours, you know, sort of pastel rainbow. It's absolutely adorable. And I was like, I'll knit her a jumper as a wedding gift. Bit weird, but I think she liked it. Um, so this is King Cole Candy Stripe. Does it say we've got a lollipop colourway? 
yeah. My mother-in-law bought this at some point and she was like one pound a ball and she gave some of it to me so I basically used an entire ball I believe to make the jumper which was the flax by Tin Can Knits and I knit it on six millimeter needles because it's the pattern is for Aran weight yarn I was using DK this is DK weight so I ended up knitting it on six millimeter needles with four and a half millimeter for the ribbing the reason why it was so much smaller for the ribbing is I don't actually have any needle sizes in circulars between four and a half and six because I do a lot of my circular knitting on the smaller end of the spectrum um, but I don't have it to show to you I didn't actually get any pictures of it which was a bit stupid of me because it, it took like a week to knit from start to finish and then like the next week was the wedding um, I completely forgot to take photos but in all honesty just go to the flax I'll link the flax pattern below in the description just go to the Ravelry page and you can scroll through all the pictures and you'll probably get an idea of this is what the yarn looks like and it will be a baby jumper. It's not the most... I mean, it's a nice pattern, it's very well written, a great starter pattern. But um, it's very much just a very nice raglan, simple pattern. Um, uh, next, next, what did I finish next? Ooh, we'll go with these. So, um, one of the reasons why this got late filmed is I went on holiday in late April to Tenerife for a week. And at the time, the only projects I had on my needles were 100% wool, non-superwash. And I don't know if you've ever sort of knit, I mean you might live, if you've ever sort of knit in a hot climate where you have to put sun cream on and there's sand and things like that, I've always struggled with wool because it is so grippy you end up with like sun cream in your knitting so this is going backwards of my normal format this is the West Yorkshire Spinners, Spinners signature four ply which is their sock yarn and uh, it's in the colour cornflower and it's a 75% superwash wool 25% nylon blend which isn't the worst for knitting sort of with sun cream on, on the beach and stuff because the superwash makes it easier to clean all the stuff that you might get caught in it out so I decided before we went that I'd cast on a sock pattern so the sock pattern itself is from my first pattern I've tried from the 52 weeks of sock book from Liner magazine and this is the candle flame sock which I think is number 48 I might put it down below um, with a couple of modifications which I'll go over in a moment but in general I love it, it's sort of got this textured pattern and then it's more obvious if I if you had it on a sock blocker the other way but it's got this really nice sort of difference between just plain sock and it and this pattern along the front. It's really pretty. So, um, oh the one modification, I, I did make a couple modifications, just personal. So the style of heel it had um, is just a normal slip stitch heel which I've done before and is my sort of standard go-to sock heel but when I was knitting the Owly socks it had the cable pattern on the Owly socks go down into the, the heel flap which I thought looked really nice and also you know cabling is meant to be a bit more of a sturdy fabric that's why you do the slip stitches it creates a slightly more reinforced heel so I decided to take the sort of generic pattern that they've got up here because it is a cabled style and bring it down into the heel flap. Now in all honesty I have no idea how well this is going to last. I might find that I wear these a few times and it's terrible and I never want to do this again and I want to just go for the reinforced. But I like how it looks because it doesn't interrupt the flow of the fabric as much when you sort of look at it. I think I think it works really well. Um, so I'm really happy that I did that. I think it worked really well. So these these were quite interesting uh, in completion because the week I was in Tenerife, I finished one of them just in a week because it was the only knitting I was doing and I was on holiday and not doing anything else. Um, but then the other one sort of languished for a bit over a month. And then I went on another holiday only to Dunster in Somerset near Minehead if you have any idea where that is um, and I ended up finishing the second one whilst I was there 
Um, so really happy with how and that sort of I just basically I did one sock in a week, but there was like a month between the two weeks, or a month and a half probably between the two weeks. Um, so again, really happy with them. I think they're really good socks. I really want to get more into sort of the textured socks. Um, I have my eye on some lace style socks from the Crimson Stitchery. I think I mentioned them in my projects I want to do in 2022 video, which I'll link if you're interested in my sort of inspiration for the year. Um, I've got some lace socks I want to work on. So I think that might be my next sock cast on. Oh, also these are just on my sock blockers I got for Christmas. I've got a little sheep on them. Um, they've not actually been properly blocked. I've just put them on here, but I do need to go and block them as well as block one of my other finished objects which hasn't been blocked yet, which I will get onto now, which is a brioche hat. So I would like to know, I have finished it. I've not, I've woven the ends in, but I've not trimmed them. There's a reason why this one's woven in on this side because I find it easy with brioche. I want it to be reversible, so I didn't want it to be too obvious. But I tend to only trim the ends after I have blocked. It's a trick I've picked up somewhere, it just helps. You don't then cut it too short or too long. It's often better to, that's why I've heard anyway. Please tell me if you think the same down in the comments. Um, so, brioche hat. I didn't really follow a specific pattern for this. It was just a self-drafted, figure it out as you go pattern. I did use the classic rib hat as a sort of basis for sort of almost how frequently to do the decrease on the top, though with brioche you do need to sort of pay attention because to get, you sort of have to take off two, two stitches each row, which means you have to fiddle with the numbers. And I've got some terrible laddering, which I'm hoping to maybe fix. I don't know, I don't think it looks too bad when it's worn. But the idea was to sort of have it reversible. So you can look just as good this side as it looks on the other side with the red more open. But the other benefit is that then you can sort of flip the brim up and you've got this sort of different style brim. And I think that looks really good. So this is a birthday present for my dad whose birthday is in just over a month actually. So I have time. Um, but I, I've been trying this year. I have a tendency of finishing gift knits either on the way to go see people um, or something like that, so I really don't. I don't like doing that, it puts a lot of stress on me. So I've been trying to finish the gift knits I want to make earlier in the year. So I've got something also to make for my mum, which is one of the next things I want to cast on, um, who's got another August birthday. And then there's another, which is a late July birthday that I want to make, but it's quite a small thing. Um, but I do want to try and sort of get them done earlier in the year before I start panicking and trying to knit things on the way to places. But brioche hat. Yarn is actually the same West Yorkshire Spinners Colour Lab DK. This one is in the crimson red and the hazel brown colours, which I think go quite well. My dad is a massive fan of red, so he's going to absolutely love it. And the brioche, I mean, I, as I mentioned when I did the cowl I did last year, I think I've fallen in love with brioche. I love the fabric it makes. It's very thick and woolly and yes, a bit of an odd present to give in sort of August, but I know my dad won't mind. He'll just save it for the winter. I do want to block it and see if I can get, I think there's a bit of weirdness in the crown. I'm trying to figure out if I did the crown decreases too quickly. It fits on my head nicely, so it'll fit on my dad's probably quite well. But yeah. Just a brioche hat, simple six point de decrease. Yeah. So that's all my finished knitting items. Um, I have got a finished sewing item, but feel free to skip if you're not into the sewing, which are, uh, I made two new project bags. These still have, oh, this one rattles, one moment. All right, no longer rattles. I still have the ends of the project, so I need to put the yarn away and the needles away. Um, but basically, I decided I really, when I, if you remember, sometime over Christmas, I made a Christmas themed project bag, and I was saying it was possibly a bit small, and I was going to sort of go out and enlarge the pattern a bit and make it a bit bigger, but I ended up deciding not to do that. 
and it's actually a really good sort of sock size so this one was the one that I used for the candle flame socks and it's like you can fit a ball of yarn in and all the needles fit in nicely so it's not the end of the world it works um, so this is just the uh, fabric is just stashed fat quarters I bought I do need to finish off the ends of that apparently I never finish off the ends of the pull cord but it's a very it's a sort of just drawstring top got a little handle it's got a couple of pockets inside one thing I did change is I think on the previous one I had two rows of shallower pockets whereas on this one I've gone for one deeper pocket or well, technically two because it's got sewn down the middle um, and I think I prefer that I think it holds things a lot better so I've got my sort of winter scenes one which I'm feel free to use throughout the year because it's it'll be fine and then let me move those out quickly I've got the slightly archery fabric one so this is just quilting cotton for the most part um, I have interfaced the exterior pieces so that it does have a bit of rigidity and stands up on its own which is nice and then just fabric just plain slightly textured fabric oh, that one's got trees on it on the inside but I do like them this one I had the hat in and actually the two balls of DK and the circular needles and the project actually fit in really well the only issue I have with them is that if I print out a pattern it's not going to fit in as nicely um, as some as a bigger bag might but in all honesty if I'm doing socks I can now do socks mostly for memory by now so it's just trying to figure out a pattern if there is a pattern or not so yeah I'm actually really happy with those and I have been using them religiously there's always a project in them I now need to You'll notice that when I go on to works in progress, I don't actually only have one work in progress. Um, so, yeah. Right. Uh, if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. If you're enjoying yourself, then please consider leaving a like and comment and maybe subscribing. I try to put out a sort of creating crafting podcast every month. I have missed the last few, um, but I, I should hopefully be going back to monthly. Um, I do also upload some other videos, so you can go check them out. But um, thank you for watching so far. So then, on to works in progress. So the first one I'm going to bring out is if you watched the last video, you might recognise this little swatch I did of a Christmas jumper. I ended up doing a few other swatches, some of which got ripped out, some of which didn't. This was sort of the final one I ended up liking. So a lot of it was trying to practice holding the yarn, tensioning the yarn. I think what I actually found out is that I think last month I was mentioning the difference of working in different circumferences. And the other thing is the difference in the yarn I was using. Which I think I didn't realise how much of a difference that was making at the time. But the more I've used it, the more I've then swapped back to Merino. So for reference, for example, this is one of my swatches for the merino I don't know if you can really tell over video but this is a sort of superwash merino blend and this is a hundred percent wool sort of not defined what kind of sheep it comes from so it's just woolly wool and you know it does have that texture it does have that toothy grippiness and I think that has made a difference in how I'm tensioning it and how I'm holding it um, so it took a while and yeah this is the swatch I'm finally happy with so it took a bit of practice it, it did sort of take quite a lot of the two months I'm not as far through as I really should be um, but I have been working on things you know I have got four finished objects but they are quite small but the hope is now that I've figured out what I'm doing I can then move on this is the jumper um, and I can, I've started on the jumper so you can see, oh well, that's showing up really nicely on the camera. Little snowflake motif. Little snowflake motif. And I'm now on to doing the little snowmen. Um, so I'm not doing it, so this, uh, I don't think I mentioned, this is the 
Festive Pullover by Ellie from Skein Deer Knits. Um, it's a Christmas jumper pattern, which I am starting now in the vague hope that it might possibly be mostly finished by Christmas. And it comes with lots of different motifs that you then use either in a yoke only or I'm doing an all over pattern. Um, and as I mentioned, the yarn is a 100% wool. It's the Wooly Knit Cones, which are British, 100% British wool, come in 500 gram cones. And I am using, the red is called Cassette Red and the cream is just cream. It does look a bit white in this light. What are you focusing on? Right, there we go. Focus on the actual knitting, please. Right, so, as I said, I've done lots of swatches and I'm finally happy with the tension, with how I'm tensioning the yarn and all those sorts of things. So, the needles I'm using are an interchangeable set, 3.5 millimeter, which is a bit smaller than the pattern calls for, but I did want a slightly tighter gauge and that was what a lot of the swatches were for. I only have these two, I don't know, I, I keep losing swatches, it's great. Um, but this is, this I know is my sort of final, final one and I'm really happy with. Um, so yeah, 2.5 millimeter needles. I think I have a note of what I did the ribbing on. I'm assuming either two millimeter, no, 3.5 millimeter needles, so I probably used 2.5 for the ribbing. That was it, I do have 2.5 set around. I just got a bit confused then as to what I was using. Um, so I think these are Knit Pro Zings if I recall correctly. I use Knit Pro interchangeables at the moment because I don't necessarily have a lot of money to spend on nice interchangeables and these, to be honest, do the job. You know, they, they work um, as interchangeables. So, there's that. Um, so yeah, that's that's coming along. Um, yeah, and as I said, I'm halfway through the snowman. There's a lot of increases. I have a lot of stitches on the needle at the moment. I think I have over 400 on the needle at the moment. So it's it's a lot. It will take some time. Um, but I sort of, because I, I've not quite got the hang of just doing colour work without thinking, so it is one something I do have to knit on whilst thinking. All the other projects I've done, especially with the candle flame, once I sort of got into the pattern, the brioche, the rib, I can just do it and I can just sit there and not have to worry about it and just do it. Um, whereas this, I do need to be paying attention, which makes it a bit tricky to find time to do, amongst everything else. And that is actually my only work in progress at the moment. I've only recently finished the socks and the hats. Well, the grey hat was finished really early, but the sock and hats, the brioche hat and the sock wasn't only finished a few days ago, so I've not actually cast anything else on yet. Um, as I mentioned, I've got plans, and I might discuss the plans later, but for the most part not. So, um, if you're wondering how the scrap blanket is going, it, it's going. I've done like four extra squares. So I'm not showing it to you because it's it's not made a significant amount of progress, so I don't see the point in showing it to you. Um, on to acquisitions. And I have two acquisitions to show you. One is some very cheap yarn I just bought. Um, so when I knit the jumper as a Christmas present, I decided I wanted to make one for one of my little nibblings who is birthday is coming up at the end of July and who I was like, I want to knit a jumper for them. So I didn't want to knit, the problem is the only other yarn I have that would be suitable is the yarn I made the other jumper of and I thought for some reason it'd be weird if they had a jumper matching one of our family friends. Um, so I got some other yarn. I actually ended up going to my local yarn shop, which I very rarely go to because they mostly sell acrylic polyester yarns and I've been trying to swap to natural fibres where I can. So wool, viscous, things like that. But I knew that I wanted to get, I don't like using wool for baby garments because baby garments should be washed frequently because babies make a lot of mess and small children make a lot of mess which I suppose, I keep calling my nibbling a baby, they're not a baby anymore, they are a sort of toddler I think at this point. I have no idea about child development so it's very vague in my mind but a toddler, they're still going to make a lot of mess. Um, so an easy wash, tumble dryable fabric is, is very important for babies and it's very hard to get that in wool reliably so I will use acrylic. 
you can get cottons but you actually also find that the really nice soft cottons often have a lot of more washing restrictions than wool can sometimes have or at least I found I found that also it can be a bit pricey to knit a fully cotton baby jumper in a nice cotton that isn't scratchy whereas I find the acrylic and I mean there is the whole using plastic thing but at the same time by knitting a jumper you are making it a little bit longer lasting and more wearable depending on the occasion so I mean I'm pretty certain I'm currently just justifying it just to justify it um, but I don't use a lot of acrylic yarn at the same time there's, there's loads of things that go into environmentalism and I do not have the time to talk about it and I just it's so difficult and it's sometimes very disheartening but anyway pretty yarn uh, hay feel, baby bonus, spots, which is this cream with these orange and red spots and I think it will look gorgeous as a baby jumper and if I finish it I should have at least something to show for it for the next episode depending on when I record the next episode because I am recording this in mid-June and I normally record at the beginning of month but that would be beginning of July and I don't know how much shooting I'm going to get done before the beginning of July but at the same time, I don't want to knock my schedule out too much. So I'm at this point, I'm rambling. And if you're still here, thank you. We'll go on to my other acquisition before I continue rambling. Um, uh, and that's this, which I got without any... Oh, okay, right. So my parents went on holiday to Alaska. And my mum went to a quilting shop. And I thought I had her business card somewhere because my mum really liked her. There we go. Business card. Quilt Alaska in Skagway. Um, and if you aren't aware, we have a rescue dog. She is part husky and so she looks very wolf like. Um, she's not a wolf. She's not a wolf dog. She is definitely husky, but she just does. So my mum got me some wolf quilting fabric. So I think it's like a six panel with different wolves doing different things. Um, I've never made a quilt before, but there's a part of me that thinks that I might use this to actually make a quilt. I don't know what I'd do with it. I don't think there's any rooms in the house that could do with a quilt. Maybe I'll just give it to the dog as a dog bed. Seems a bit of a waste though for $17 fabric. But, yeah. Wolves. I like me some wolves. So I got that. I do like showing you all my acquisitions, mainly because, you know, stuff. Um, so that's it really for the content. If you want to hang around for live stuff, that's great. If not, then thank you for watching. But um, as I mentioned, we've been on a few holidays and that's basically what's thrown my timing out for recording videos. Um, so, you know, I... Yeah, it just threw, threw my timing out. And I just kept not having time to record between the wedding and the holidays. So the first holiday was to Tenerife. We went at the end of April, um, my boyfriend had some time off, boyfriend, yeah, other half, had some time off, and then whilst we were there, um, as you may have noticed, the extra addition is we got engaged, and I now have a pretty ring. Um, so he did it whilst we were in the Tiede National Park, Mount Tiede National Park, which is the volcano in the centre of Tenerife. Um, and he did it near there, and it was very nice and lovely, and yes. We also did a lot of snorkeling and if you know me you know that I like bird watching and that applies to fish as well, just animal watching, nature watching in general. Bird watching is often the easiest in the UK because we you know, don't have anything else other than birds to look at. Everything else is hiding and the only reason that it lives is because it's so good at hiding. Um, yeah, no, we have completely decimated our na nature in the UK which is why, yeah, anyway. Um, so we did a lot of snorkeling and we did some scuba diving. We're both scuba diving qualified under Paddy. So we went out and did some diving, which was great. We saw some rays. We saw a really big ray, which was really cool. Um, we also saw some parrotfish that were sort of unique to the area, which was also cool. So then we also had the wedding we went to, wedding party, which was up near Derby, Nottingham Way. If you don't know, I live in South Gloucestershire, near Bristol. So that was a longish drive, but not too long, which was nice. Um, nice to go see sort of friends, family, friends I haven't sort of seen in a while, which was really good. And I, it, was, it was nice to see everybody. And then last week, we went to Somerset to Dunster 
to participate in the Grand Western Archery Society Championship Weeks held in the grounds of Dunster Castle, otherwise known as Dunster Week, or just things falling into shot. Um, so it's a week of daily archery competitions, different types, different styles. Um, it's sort of meant to be a test of the archer, different things. Um, I haven't actually shot it for a few years, it was cancelled in 2020. 2021 I didn't have the stamina after not shooting for a lot 2020. But this year I did actually enter one of the days, I entered the field course, which was great fun and amazing and it's basically on a cliff so it's a lot of work but it's some beautiful archery shots. Um, so field archery is you shoot at 3D, an the type of field archery I do, you shoot at 3D animal targets at unmarked distances, so you sort of have to guess the distance and then guess where you're aiming because of the distance. Great fun, absolutely love it. Um, it's a beautiful course. Um, but then the rest of the days I was helping, just volunteering and helping move things and helping find lost arrows and just generally doing whatever I was told to do by the organising person the, and the judges. Um, which is, I actually really enjoy. I know some people don't, but I genuinely really enjoy it. Um, you also get some time. The So Dunster Castle is owned by the National Trust. Um, and they have been trying to increase their biodiversity in the last few years. So there's a lot of long grass on the field, which is kind of annoying as an archer, but, you know, biodiversity is always good. Um, so... Lots of interesting animals to see as well, which is always, it's always fun. So i pretty certain I saw a red kite. And I've had some people be like, and I looked at the RSPB website, because I was sort of looking at this bird, and I'm like, what are you? And it was a big bird of prey, and it had a very pale head. I didn't have my binoculars on me. And after looking at sort of the birds of prey it could be, I think I have settled on Red Kite. Now, when I then checked the RSPB website for Red Kite, it was a bit... It said that in, the, in where Dunster is, the only time you'd find Red Kite would be the winter. And of course the middle of June is very much not the winter. So it's not quite the right time of year. At the same time, just over the water in Wales, I do believe it's found all year round. So either they've been breeding over there and they've expanded and the RSPB website hasn't caught up yet. Or it was just a coming across the water to hunt in Dunster. But it was very exciting to see and there were buzzards as well and loads of swallows and swifts because of course the long grass brings in all the insects so the swallows and swifts have things to hunt which is amazing to see it's always great to see them swooping around and hunting so great um so it, it feels my little nature watching heart with joy to see all that and to be covered in beetles because the beetles just decided to land on everything including archers good fun so Genuinely, if you are archer and if you are a member of Archery GB, and even if you're not a member of Archery GB, but you're a member of World Archery, I think it is, I fully recommend looking into Dunster Week. It's great fun. It's a lovely archery week of just different types of archery. It's wonderful. Highly recommend it. Um, so when I say different types, I mean everything target, field, clout. There was a team tournament this year, but I don't think the team tournament's coming back next year. It's got Imperial and Metric Distances. Um, different scoring types and things like that, um, but it's great fun. So if, I don't think I have many people who watch me for the archery content, not that there's a lot of it, but I fully recommend that if you do like archery and you're sort of affiliated with Archery GB World Archery side of the archery affiliations, then check them out. Check out. We've had international people before, so make sure you have the right insurance if you're international, but otherwise it's fine. Um, but in general that's it. I have finished rambling. If you're still here, Thank you for watching. Um, if you want to see more videos, then please check out links at the end of the video and consider subscribing. Um, I put out a hopefully back to monthly podcast, and I, as I said earlier, I put out other content. I've got some shorts. I've not really been doing the shorts well recently. Um, I would love to see what people think they would like to see as a short. Um, so any suggestions would be greatly appreciated. 
Um, you can also check out my Instagram Ravelry, which are linked in the description. Um, I'm not very active on either of there at the moment, but feel free to check them out. There's also, yeah, a website, so... Yeah. Um, thank you for watching, and have a beautiful day.